Welcome back to Management Decision Tools. In this segment, we will continue our discussion in queuing system multiple server configuration, focusing on the topic of cost economic analysis of queue systems. Queue systems basically waste our times. Uh, there are two parts that waste our times. If you own the whole queue systems, you are cost, cost, causing the customers to lose productivity by forcing them to wait in the queue. Obviously, that's what you and I uh, experience from day to day. And as a queue system owner, you also pay for the servers to run. Okay, whether it is machine, human, uh, as long as they are serving and as long as they are idling, you still pay for the utility services, um, the uh, salary for to keep the human running. Uh, and so on. So, so if you are the queue system owner, you pay, you pay and pay and pay, you pay for a lot. Uh, when you cause the customers to wait, customers times are affected. In some sense, that is uh, kind of none of our business. We don't have to care uh, because they are wasting their time. However, if that is the only way to think about our cost, then our cost would be written as our our TC, our total cost, right, of operations, of operations, of the queue system, will then be based on the number of servers. So the higher the number of servers, the more we pay on an hourly basis. I mean, it could have been minute basis and uh, day basis, but let's just say it's on hourly basis. So the total cost of operations is this constant CS, which is a constant, which is uh, the amount of dollars per time. So let's just put in um, the annotation here that CS is dollars per hour example. It can be per minute per day, but let's just use a standardized timing uh, unit. So K is the number of servers. So if we use our total cost of operations, we model it as the more servers we deploy, the higher dollar, right, the real dollars that we pay. That's true, but not enough, not enough. Because if, as in all cases, we try to minimize our cost of operations, then uh, the, the best answer is always, other than zero, then the best answer is always one. In other words, no matter how fast and furious the customers come into our bank, our retail shop, our ATM machine, our online server, and so on, we only have one server. That's to minimize the cost. And uh, it will take a very enlightened uh, operations manager or CEO to recognize that, wait, that's not it, right? And then uh, subjectively overwrite this, this very cost-saving measure that is always operate on one server basis. So can we, we ask, can we uh, have a quantifiable way to say that no, minimizing until one server is not the only thing that we want to uh, optimize. We also want to optimize customer experience. We want to optimize the, or rather minimize the damage done on us when we indirectly cause our customers to wait. So, uh, trying not to make it very, very complicated, we just attach a constant CW times the number of customers we end up causing being trapped in our queue system L. Now, two things to take note of. First, we have introduced CW, <coughs> that is cost of, uh, cost of waiting, which is already uh, written down in the slide, but I just want to annotate it with the unit. Right? So we see that K is a number, K times dollar per hour is dollar per hour. Dollar per hour, mind you, is not just dollars, but per hour. So TC of operations, the total cost is actually a rate, a running number. Say when we operate one hour of the queue system, we will have to pay this amount of dollars. That's point number one. So it's a, it's a rate, not an absolute dollar. Secondly, CSCW, they are constants, rates, constant rates. So we have to get from the question, what... Um, uh, how costly the servers are to run. For machine uh, servers, such as factory machines, ATM machines, and all that, 
those typically will be the utilities like electricity or in factory setting it can be electricity and water water can be expensive it could be lubricant oil it could be other raw materials uh maintenance lubricants and, and stuff to to allow the server to continue to operate so now that we understand the abstract concept then when it's human server basically uh salary is the main bulk of the cost yeah so uh for that's for cs for cw this number however is a is a sort of a proxy number this number is not a physical actual dollar that the q system owner such as the bank or the factory owner pays to the customer you and i don't get dollars when we stand in line it'll be nice uh, maybe not as a job but as a part-time uh, part-time hobby to stand in line and get money but that's not going to happen so cost of waiting is relative to the q system owner how much money are we paying on a per hour basis when we cause cause l customer on average to be stuck in our q system in our q system means all the customers in the q component and all the customers in the many many servers that we have all right so together uh we'll come to that point again why we also care about those who are who, whom we are serving so um so that's the second point in that 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 the cost of waiting is a constant it's a rate constant and it's the it's a proxy estimate of how much money on hourly basis is going to cost us it's going to harm us if we make an average of l customers uh, wait in our system oh, all right wait includes being served i mean stuck in our system for uh, an hour okay and this number although we say it's cost of waiting this number is a bit arbitrary because it's not physical dollar being paid out it is in some sense magnifying the impatience the inconvenience the frustrations that the l customers have in terms of dollars and cents right so in the bank scenario suppose the bank now fears that if we make l customers wait uh uh for a very long time because we only serve one uh, with one server these customers are going to bad mouth us okay so they are going to go to facebook social media to say something about how terrible it is and all that and then um because of these vip customers influence their circle of friends are usually vips as well they're going to withdraw money they are going to close accounts they're not going to have the next investment opportunity with our bank and therefore we suffer you see so if the bank all right has this uh, internal conversation within the management that says look uh, making these l customers wait for an hour is a bad thing how bad is it will attach a number so this is our cost of waiting it doesn't have to be the the salary you know down to the last cents and minutes of these customers uh, it can be heartland people you know who might not be uh, those private banking clients kind but collectively they are important right so that uh, our marketing marketing department can say that our bank is serving uh, such a big portion of of the population in this country or something like that so to support that marketing campaign we need to uh, retain customers right something to that effect so it doesn't have to be vip or totally monetary it can be for other beneficial reasons that we want to uh, keep the customers happy by attaching a high cost of waiting all right to make l customers stay in our system unreasonably stay in our system for an hour so this cost of um waiting if it is high if it is high it will cause as in c-a-u-s-e it will cause us to therefore deploy higher number of k right because if the cost of making some number of customers is high wait up wait how can we reduce the number of customers in our system by increasing our service capacity and that means deploying more servers all right so other than making our only server work like superman crazy fast like 10 times faster that's not possible we'll deploy more servers which are more or less having the same mu so that's the reason why we have more servers 
So with most of us, the average number of customers in our system should go down. And if we extend to infinite number of servers, there should be no customer. The moment they come in, they get served right away and they get whizzed out right away. And so with infinite servers, then basically our L will be the minimum, but our cost of server, all right, the, the cost of servers here, this term, will be very, very high. If we reduce the cost of server down to the minimum one server only, cost of server is very low, but our number of customers trapped unreasonably in our system. Let's use the word unreasonably to remind us that having more L, greater L, is not a good idea. Uh, so trap in our system is not good. Times a large CW, it will make the cost very, very high. And that ignites a warning signal that TC, now having very little K, small K, is still very, very high because small K causes L to increase. And so TC remains high. So we now see the seesawing effect. Increase K, our cost of service, very high. Cost of waiting, uh, very low. Decrease K down to, towards one. Cost of service, very, very low. Cost of waiting, very, very high. So there's this seesawing uh, effect between cost of service and cost of waiting. At some point, we ask, there's this balance where, you know, uh, cost of service is more or less the same. And so we can't optimize anymore. So what is this number? What is this number? So that's the idea. We want to balance it by finding the optimal K. All right. Another way to think about it is cost of server. The total cost, right, is made up of two components, cost of service, cost of waiting. Uh, if we adjust K only, if our only lever is to adjust K, and it looks like K, because once we estimated cost of service, that was salary, our utility payment that's fixed, cannot uh, change it somewhat. Our cost of waiting is a constant that we come up with, that's true, but you shouldn't arbitrarily change it too much after having some rationale to justify that our CW is $100 per hour. You cannot try to arbitrarily change it, right? So um, that, that wouldn't be the whole point of having this, this model again. So once we come up with the two numbers, L is a reaction to K. So our only change, our only control is what is the best number of servers? We can tweak K up and down and uh, total cost will initially rise, right? Then at some point it will reduce as we increase to higher number of servers. It will reduce and reduce. Then at some point we will expect it to be more or less there already. As we increase more K, uh, it will kind of reduce marginally and then stabilize. And as we increase K some more, it should start to increase because now the cost of 